Alleluia. Glory to Jesus Christ, Yoshua HaMashiach, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we serve a magnificent Lord who gives us throughout his word great prefigurations of concepts that are going to be revealed at a later time, but he gives us types and shadows beforehand. And we're going to look how we can connect our service to what happened in the beginning at the time of creation. And so let us go to a passage that most of us already know. That is Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 to 10. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. And so all things have been created for the Lord and for his glory. We can confirm that by going to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Verse 16, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And so we have this idea that the Lord created all things for his glory. It's for him. It's by him. And there was nothing that was created that wasn't created by him. And the Lord in the beginning shows us something very interesting to confirm to us, as he says in Isaiah chapter 42, verse 8, that he gives his glory to no one, not even to us, because according to Luke, we are useless servants. And when we do something for the Lord, it ought to be for his glory and not for ours. And everything we do is by the strength of the Lord. Philippians 4.13. And so now that we have these elements in place, let us go to Genesis chapter 1. In Genesis chapter 1, we see here, looking at the word divide, in verse 3, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Verse 4, And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And so there was a division already made between the light and the darkness. And we understand at this stage of creation that it is spiritual light. That is being spoken about, which is in the image of Christ coming into the world as the light of the world, and that it is only later that the sun and the moon will actually take up this task of dividing the light from the darkness. And we will go to this passage right now, that is in verse 14. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and it was so and god made two great lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night he made the stars also and God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night, and listen to this, and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And so once again, we see that the sun and the moon actually have a duty to divide the light from the darkness. But this task it was already accomplished by God earlier when he said during the very first day of creation that God divided the light from the darkness. And so that was already done. 
And so you see that spiritually, the Lord had already accomplished that work of separating the light from the darkness in the spirit. And then in the physical realm, that spiritual action was also confirmed by the ministry of the sun and the moon who would come to divide the light from the darkness, but in a physical sense. And so this is the image of how God has prepared works for us even before the foundation of the world so that we would walk in them as Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 to 10 uh, teach us. And this image of our ministry, of our service, it is even rooted in the concept of everything having been created to play a role that has already been put in place by the Lord so that nothing can glory and no one can glory based on the ministry that they are exercising. And so this is beautiful. We find out that the sun and the moon came to operate inside of a work that had been done spiritually by the Lord beforehand. And the moon and the sun were called to walk into this work of dividing the light from the darkness, although the Lord had previously done it for them. And this is magnificent. And we find out also the image of us being useless servants, as we saw in Luke chapter 17, 10. And so you see the great Lord who has created all things for him. He is very gracious and loving to prepare for every actor a work to be done. And the sun and the moon, they had a glory that was uh, particular amongst the stars. And we learn in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 that every celestial body has a glory that differeth from another. And indeed, the sun has a greater glory than the moon. And the sun and the moon, the two of them, have a greater glory than the stars in general. And now we will go and see something else pertaining to service. If we go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, And the Lord God took the man, and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And so the Lord gave man a work to do, an occupation. And so this is an image of a father having prepared the way for his son, so that when his son is put in his environment, he has a task, he has a purpose, he has a ministry to execute. And it is to dress the garden and to keep it. Although the Lord had already created all things perfect and had seen that it was good. But in his kindness and mercy, he had prepared a place for Adam to come in. As he says in Ecclesiastes, the Lord, it is a good thing for man to find something to do with all his might with all his energy and to invest himself in this labor that he finds to do under the sun. And that is by the hand of God. It is the gift of God. And so we have seen that the stars, the sun and the moon more specifically, had an office prepared for them. We see that Adam had an office prepared for him. And likewise, in Ephesians chapter 2, we see how we as saints have an office already prepared for us that we only have to walk into by submitting to the will of the Lord who will guide us into these works that he has already prepared for us. And this is how we get no glory, no credit, and are useless servants because we walk in the glory of the Lord. We walk in the glory of the works that he had prepared for us since past eternity. And so this is marvelous. And we see how all things were created for him and by him and how he gives his glory to no one and further understand why he says, your salvation is by grace and not by a work that you would have done. 
Because if it were for cause of a work, then I would be a debtor, and your salvation would be obtained by way of a debt that I have toward you. And so this is beautiful. And now if we look to the master himself, Jesus, let's go to Mark chapter one. Verse 37 and verse 38 also. And when they had found him, that is Jesus, they said unto him, All man seek for thee. Verse 38. And he said unto them, Let us go into the next towns, that I may preach there also. For therefore came I forth. Jesus came with a purpose. He was going to preach the gospel. Because, as he said earlier in verse 15, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. And so he had a, a mandate, he had a duty to execute. Amen. We can also go into the gospel of John. Chapter 18, verse 11. When they came to arrest Jesus, then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword into the sheath. The cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? And so there was a work that Jesus came to do. And he was not going to be deterred from it. He was going to walk into the works that had been prepared for him. And so he had a cup to drink that was his. And this points again to how the Lord has servants perform that which they have been called to execute. The purpose, the reason for why they have been called, it comes to be executed until the end. Hallelujah. In 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 12, the Lord tells us, when I begin, I make an end. And so he oversees the work of his laborers until the end. Lastly, we will go to Mark. Yet again. Chapter 10, verse 45. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. And this is beautiful because it incorporates the two verses that we've seen previously, we saw in Mark chapter 1 that the Lord said that the time was fulfilled and he had to preach the gospel because the kingdom was at hand. And he said, I have to go to the next towns to preach, for therefore came I forth. And so here in this verse, we see, for even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister himself he had to minister, number one. And number two, he had to give his life a ransom for many, which connects to John chapter 18, verse 11, where he said, when they were going to arrest him, shall I not drink this cup and be arrested and crucified so that I am given a ransom for many so that he could redeem us with his blood, hallelujah, and give us remission of sins. And so this is beautiful. We see how the master himself, Jesus Christ, the almighty God, the almighty Lord, having come amongst us to dwell in a vessel of flesh, to defeat this flesh by the power of his Holy Spirit, to then give us that same glorified spirit so that we may do the same and then defeat death, conquer death and have eternal life in him. 
we see that the son of God, Jesus Christ, he himself as a servant, he executed his ministry in accordance with the cup that was prepared for him to walk into, the work that was prepared for him as he was even declared to have been slain even before the foundation of the world, meaning even before the foundation of the world, it was already a settled matter that he would come into the world to die as a lamb for us. And so there you have it, brothers and sisters. We have seen how the Lord creates all things for him and they are created by him. It's for his honor and his glory, which is his alone. And we saw how even for the stars, the sun and the moon more specifically, they were given an office that they had to walk into, which was to divide the light from the darkness. And we see how we as saints, we walk into the works prepared for us by the Lord as useless servants and were used by the Lord as vessels unto honor, unto glory. And lastly, we saw how we have the master himself embodying this concept in that Jesus, the son of God, the almighty having come in the flesh, he also walked into his ministry with honor and grace to actually accomplish the cup that was prepared for him according to the works that had been prepared for him by the Father since past eternity. And so we see how Jesus Christ himself executed his ministry in accordance with the works that were prepared for him since past eternity, and he drank that cup. He ministered, and his life was given a ransom for many. And he is our ultimate example. Hallelujah. And we see how his words are magnificent because they are filled with mysteries and secrets that he reveals over the course of time. And even from the beginning, we see how the Lord is announcing us things to come that would be revealed in a clearer manner later on. How the Lord gives us images of things to come. And therefore, it is not a surprise for us to learn in Ecclesiastes that there is nothing new under the sun and that that which is has already been. Because in the creation, many secrets are already present and revealed in part, but to be understood later in greater detail as we find out how the Lord unveils many things to us. So understand, brothers and sisters, that you are walking in the glory of the Lord in works that he has already prepared for you. And therefore, simply submit to his will, be obedient. And as he says in John chapter 15, verse 5, you are the branches. He is the tree. Without him, you can do nothing. And so you have to accept that he is your guide. You have to accept to follow him and you have to accept it to walk in the works that you have been called into. And he is the one who gives you even strength to do these works, which he had already prepared for you. And so the glory is not yours, but it is the Lord. Hallelujah. May you be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ, Yoshua HaMashiach. Amen.